thanks for watching the Sea Butters Technology Channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Broadwell U platform. This mobile platform is Intel's latest and it has a new Intel HD graphics chip. Uh, this particular graphic chip sits right on the die right next to the CPU and we're going to look at the performance but a lot of times what we like to do here on the Sea Butters channel, you've seen in lots of our videos, we took a look at how thermal efficiency affects the Surface Pro 3 and how undervolting can help you gain additional performance. So we're going to look at how much performance you can gain on your Broadwell U system by both upping the thermal envelope on your particular platform using the Intel XTU utility but also how you can undervolt your GPU, your processor, your processor cache to help you get more performance within the same thermal limits. So today we're going to be taking a look at my 5600U Broadwell chip on a ThinkPad Yoga platform. So let's take a look. What I'm going to be doing here is running a benchmark at purely stock settings. So right now, voltage is at completely stock, and all the TDP settings are at stock, and we are running in high performance mode. And one thing that I do when running this benchmark to ensure really accurate results is I let this title screen, which you can see it's actually loading the computer very high, higher than the actual benchmark. Uh, so you can see the CPU temperatures up close to 90 degrees Celsius, where I'm just going to let it stay fully thermally saturated and the reason I do that is so much about performance these days on these little on these chipsets is uh, based on the temperature because it will thermally throttle so I let it fully saturate itself with heat before I start the benchmark and that throws out a lot of the variables that you run into. You know, you start with a cold system, run a benchmark, it's going to get a much higher score than a hot system. So I just let this, the computer heat up as, you know, about as hot as it's ever going to get before starting the benchmark. One thing to note right now at stock settings, sitting in, you know, at a highly intensive uh, title screen, it's sitting at 1.03 gigahertz right here and the graphical frequency is floating around between 850 and 750 uh, so the I would take note of that so see what that processor is doing and the graphic frequency is doing because those are your indicators of what performance can be so I'm gonna go ahead and start the benchmark this is the stock settings we're gonna see what kind of performance we get I've run this benchmark I know what to expect I've run it three or four times already and we're going to film it this time so you can take a look and see how it does its stock. And then we'll undervolt it, play with the TDP, and see what kind of performance we get. So here we go. I will note that the green bar on top is the CPU temperature, the light blue bar is the CPU utilization, the red is the graphic frequency, and the orange is the processor frequency. So that may help you to see what's going on here. One thing you'll notice is that stock settings, the processor runs at fairly low frequencies. It's a supposedly a 2.6 you know stock processor that's running at 1.05 on a game right here mostly it's doing that to keep the temperature down and, but also to limit the amount of uh, watts going through the system which we'll look at in just a second here but you can see the graphical frequency this GPU should be able to go 950 megahertz but really it's hanging out around uh, 750-ish or so so there we go our min is 25.2, max is 38, and the average is 31.8. So, let's go into 
the Intel XTU interface. And I will be posting a video on how to undervolt your processor, but for now I'm going to go what I know are the absolutely best undervolted settings for this machine in my testing without causing any instability issues or crashing. So for me, I'm going to set the dynamic CPU voltage offset to negative 75. I'm going to set the processor cache voltage to negative 75 millivolts. And this Intel utility is available on their website. Just search Intel XTU and you'll be able to find it. And if your Intel processor is compatible, it will tell you and it will let you install it. And it will let you tweak the settings on it, which is pretty cool. So on the graphics voltage, I'm actually going to take that down to negative 100 millivolts. And what this is doing is bringing down the voltage that it's going to push through the chips as it uh, runs. So the difference between the dynamic CPU voltage offset and the core voltage, and the reason I'm adjusting the dynamic is the dynamic means a CPU when it's idling may use you know a very low voltage scale and when it's going very high it may up the voltage by quite a bit so if I do a dynamic voltage offset it will always be 75 millivolts below what it would normally be so that's a better way to dynamically adjust your voltages while still undervolting if you just adjust the core voltage it's going to stay static and you may be pumping a lot more voltage through your processor when it's idling and you don't want that so we've now underclocked the Broadwell U platform, the GPU, the, the processor cache, the CPU. So the other key thing you're going to want to adjust here is the Turbo Boost Power Max and the Turbo Boost Short Power Max. Now I just adjust the Turbo Boost Power Max over here because it will automatically adjust the other one. So I'm actually going to allow this platform to operate under a 20 watt envelope up from a 15 watt envelope so I'm telling it you know don't use 15 watts of power actually I'll let you use 20 watts of power so I'm gonna hit apply and we've now applied those settings so we're undervolted we've opened up our TDP envelope to 20 watts and let's take a look and see how well it does. Okay, before I let the benchmark run, I'm going to let it thermally heat up so we don't get any stray results. We want our results to be as comparable as possible. And I have run all these tests several times on my own and I know what to expect uh, and if you know I'll, we'll see it in that same range I'm very confident after you know after every tweak I do to the voltage settings I've been testing it running benchmarks testing it running benchmarks making little adjustments one thing you'll notice right off the bat is you can see this title screen is now running at 2.6 and 850 900 950 so right now, exactly right now as you look, that's maxed out. So th that's the highest frequency you would expect it to run at. So you can see the undervolting allows it at roughly the same temperature to actually let it overcome the, the limit. So it's able to operate at higher frequencies in the same, uh, same heat envelope, basically. And we've also adjusted the TDP setting, which helps quite a bit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start the benchmark now that we've kind of seen, you can see the heat saturated up there at the very top. So now that that's saturated, I'm going to run the benchmark and we'll see how much we improve.
you will note that since we've upped the TDP, the CPU is allowed to get a little bit hotter. It's about 98 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. In fact, Haswell to U, uh, the TDP limit, I believe, or sorry, the uh, the maximum thermal temperature that it could sit at without throttling itself down was 100 degrees Celsius, which is what we're at right now. Uh, I did notice in the specs of Broadwell U that it actually does not, you know, its maximum temperature is 105, which is an increase. So, average frames per second after undervolting, 35.9 with a max frames per second of 44 and min of 28. So right there, over our initial benchmark of 31, we're getting about one, about 13.6% improvement from undervolting. So that basically bumps us up, you know, four, four or five frames a second. So not too bad. Now that we've seen how Broadwell U handles undervolting, now let's take it up to stupid mode. So I have unlocked using the Intel XTU utility a turbo power boost max of 25 watts up from the 15 watts. Now I didn't just do this nilly willy and I would not recommend doing this at home or for any period of extended use. So the other thing I did was added the fan from our Service Pro 3 uh, video and also I have slightly raised the back end of the chassis to allow more airflow to the, the existing fan underneath. So now that we've made some airflow optimizations we've basically unlocked our processor to the full performance we're getting going to be able to let it push 25 watts of power through this system. Um, we're going to run the benchmark again. So uh, what we can see so far is that throttling at, well, just running at the title screen, we are sitting at 2.6 gigahertz and 950 on the GPU. These are the maximums for this particular processor uh, in non-turbo modes. Uh, and on the GPU, that is the, the highest uh, frequency that you will see. So we basically went from at stock it was you know sitting around at about 1 gigahertz and 750 megahertz on the GPU and now we're basically getting the full power of the processor uh, in this intensive title screen so the benchmark is actually a little bit less intensive than the title screen which is funny to say but uh, let's go ahead and see how using this enhanced uh, cooling setup and allowing 25 watts to flow through the system and undervolting to negative 75 millivolts on the CPU, negative 75 on the cache, and negative 100 on the GPU. And so this is our best case scenario for getting the maximum performance out of this Broadwell U platform, uh, mobile platform. So let's see what kind of performance we get and we can compare that to the baseline to finish up. Starting the benchmark in 3, 2, 1. So there we have it, running in absolutely stupid mode, we're getting an average frame per second of 36.6. Now 36.6 over our baseline of 30.6 is a 19.6% improvement by using undervolting and TDP adjustment techniques. So that's pretty good. Uh, now I don't know if running in stupid mode is worth a few frames per second extra, but you can get a little bit of benefit out of using enhanced thermals. Uh, and I don't think you'd get much more with any better cooling than this because uh, technically 
uh, the CPU frequency is maxed out, graphics frequency is maxed out at this point, you're not going to eke any more performance out of it than this. But that's pretty good. It's much better than stock, and so with a few tweaks that I've shown in this video, you should be able to eke a little bit more performance out of your Broadwell U processor. So let's go back and recap what we've learned. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. So what did we learn about the mobile Broadwell U platform? So the CPU GPU does respond to undervolting. It does respond to increasing the TDP limits as well. So we went from about 31 frames per second in stock all the way up to an extreme of about, you know, close to 37 frames per second. That's about a 20% improvement in graphical performance in our particular test. Now, these results might be more extreme if you're doing short burst loads, uh, but for sustained gaming performance, a 20% increase is nothing to sniff at. So, how did we achieve this? We bumped the processor millivoltage down by about 75 millivolts, the cache by 75 millivolts, and the GPU down by about 100 millivolts, and increased our TDP from 15 uh, watts to 20 and 25 is what we showed in the video. So at the extreme of that, 20% more performance. On average, you could, you know, just undervolt and keep about the same temperature, uh, up your thermal limit to 20 watts instead of 15, and actually keep it cooler uh, than normal and still get more performance. So uh, the extreme is about 20% greater performance by performing these simple tweaks. Uh, if you need information on how to use the Intel XTU utility to undervolt your platform and your CPU, which will work on you know lots of different ranges of CPUs, even desktop CPUs. Uh, stay tuned for my next video where I'll be looking at Intel XTU utility and how you can use it to undervolt your system and how to you know go through the steps of the entire undervolting and performance tweaking process. So I hope you learned something. I hope you can use this to get a few more frames per second out of your games if you've got a mobile Broadwell platform. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Appreciate all the subscribers. Uh, the channel's growing a lot. I haven't made a video for a while. I'm in the process of moving. Um, but we're in a new set, new location, and uh, we'll keep the videos rolling as long as you guys keep subscribing and liking. So thanks so much for watching. And